Hey, what's up, everyone? My name's Zach Olinger. In this podcast series, I talk about relationships. Now, I know, as a man, you may not want to talk about relationships. Or you may even tell me that the relationship that you're in is already pretty good. But I'm going to invite you to consider this. Could you be a little bit more fulfilled in the relationship that you have? I would like to have you consider that there may be other ways to kind of see the conflicts that are truly just unnecessary that we all experience in a different light. And if you're open to receiving or just giving me a little bit of your time, then I look forward to my guests and I inspiring you to become a man that can have more freedom, less conflict, and more pleasure in their relationships. Thanks for joining me. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me on another episode of The Real Zach Olinger. Today, my guest is Susie, and she is an energy um, worker and a mindset coach that works with a variety of different individuals. And today, she's going to talk to us about the inner critic, the inner voice, and the conflict. Um, I don't know if conflict's necessarily quite the right word, but or if she would frame it that way, but the, the inner critic that we all have and her experience with her own. Uh, so I'll just pass it over to you, Susie, and uh, I'll let you take it from there. Thank you for joining me today. Sure. Hi, Zach. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here today and to have a chat with you about relationships and the inner voice or the inner critic, how you like to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So where would you like me to, to start? Um, well, I think probably... Um, I just would like to hear some background, I suppose, like like we were talking about before the recording. Um, like you said, th- sometimes how it shows up in your relationships or just kind of how it showed up like throughout your life, throughout different um, kind of scenarios or experiences. So pretty much anywhere that you want to start or if there's any memorable um, experiences that you want to talk about and how how you relate to it, um, that inner voice and, and how you manage it. So I'll just kind of leave it up to you with anything that you feel like sharing. So, yeah. Okay, let's do that. I guess to briefly mention, Zach asked me um, what kind of topic I wanted to talk about in regards to relations and what kind of conflict. And then I was like, ooh, conflict. I don't really get into conflict during relationships. Like, of course, there's sometimes you have a different point of view, but we don't really scream or we don't really fight. I'm not really that, that kind of person. I was like, I, I just asked the universe. And I was like, what, what do I need to talk about? And then I got the topic, inner voice, inner conflict. Because even though we might be in a beautiful relationship, there's always something we can work on. There's always a way to evolve. And... A lot of us are very ambitious people. I know a lot of your, like, what is it, peers and people like you have in your your network are people that like self-development and like I'm that as well, one of those as well. And you're looking for how to improve things, how to make it better. And in not only relationships, but in all areas of your life. And then we want to kind of take this control and it's like, okay, I want to make my relationship the best it can be. And then it's like, okay, how do I do that? And then this inner voice comes up and you're like, well, does he actually like you? Is it okay to do this? What would they think? Am I going to embarrass myself now? It's all these kind of, I'm sure like the people that are hearing this and I'm sure you, you as well, you just go through these kind of moments and you can be for a long time together or you can be very brief together and you, you still have these kind of, sometimes insecurities or questions. And it's like, is this normal? How do you deal with it? How do we silence it? Are we fighting it? Or are we actually becoming friends with this inner voice? What what is the purpose of this inner voice? Is the purpose to bring us in alignment? Or is the purpose to survive or protect? And if the inner voice wants us to survive and protect, then it's actually like the way that the inner voice or the ego or the critic within us wants to do that might be slightly different than our conscious self would like to do it because the ego is about staying in the comfort zone, doing everything to not be seen or be secure and not taking any risks. And therefore it constantly has this this inner chatter like before we go out on a date or before we see a person 
before we're going to have a, a certain conversation, you would have played over and over in your mind what could happen or what's going to happen. Oh, the person is going to say this to me tonight. Oh, I'm nervous about this. Or, oh, what do I need to respond back? And you would have thought about like 50 different things on how to respond or what to say. And then eventually you meet the person or you see each other again and the event doesn't even occur. And it's like, how much energy do we constantly spend? Do we give this inner voice, this inner critic of us that is actually not necessary? And why do we allow this inner critic to be, become so much to the forefront to really influence our life and sometimes even run our lives? And it's very interesting because a couple of years ago, when I got into a relationship with my now fiance, I was very nervous. I liked him and it was a really big soul connection. I just felt like we matched so well. And then a lot of things happened that were like, I would have not even gone on a date with him if this would have been a normal situation because there occur like three, four, five things that were like, Usually I just said no, but sometimes things are just meant to be right. And you go with the flow and eventually like you overcome your hurdles and then you meet properly. And there's this like beautiful connection there. And it was so deep that it became really fearful. Even when we got together and we lived together, I was like so fearful to lose him. And this fear came a lot of the time. It was driven by this inner voice, like, are you good enough? Is he going to break up? Are you going to meet his expectations? And it, it let me, like my behavior of fear, put energetic hooks in him. Like it's an influence sometimes the way I would think, but mostly it distracted me. It distracted the way I thought about things, the amount of energy I spent on it and the decisions I made. Like I could have been so much more free, so much more myself, so much more of who I really am if this inner voice wouldn't have been constantly influencing me. And I'm sure there's lots of people that go to this kind of situation. And like one of the things was talking about it with my partner and it was very understanding and very loving. And this was also during a period whereby I really got into my spiritual path which I was very uncertain about. Like I didn't like spirituality. I thought it was all woo woo. There was a huge fear around it. Like it, it was all like, and he was more like, you, you just try it out. If, it, if you want to explore this and you want to tr like, like what does it open up your intuitive skills and see like what's going to happen when you live more from your heart instead of being constantly in the mind and in your head, then just go for it. So at the same time, even though I was so insecure, he came into a, a position of being more like giving me the confidence to do things. And because I developed on the spiritual path and started to clear energetic blockages in my subconscious, that because the subconscious is influencing like 90% of your decisions, right? You think you're making a decision consciously, but actually the subconscious has already made the decision for you. So I start learning a the technique called Tita Healing. And I start clearing my beliefs in my subconscious mind. I helped other people and they helped me. And I did a lot of healings on myself. And by clearing away the fear, by clearing away the doubt, the energy blockage of doubt and resistance, it actually allowed the inner voice to calm down, to quiet down. And of course, there are periods that that things were new or things happened and the inner voice would be like become really loud again. But it's about allowing the energy to flow instead of needing to control it, needing to control this inner voice for yourself to be okay. It was really about letting go and like understanding why it would come up. What kind of beliefs did I have in my belief system in my subconscious that were influencing and steering this? And then being able to release those because the subconscious only holds on to beliefs that serves a person in some way. Even the bad beliefs, it serves us in some kind of way. It might be being safe or being secure or not losing love or like there can be all kinds of ways, keeping our freedom. 
um, I've seen it lots, people that don't get into relationships because they are afraid to lose their freedom. Therefore, they rather be alone. And it's just these subconscious belief patterns that once we release those, we can see that we can be free and be in a relationship. And it energetically shifts. And that's what happened with me. Like things started to shift energetically very quickly because this, this technique is powerful. And like things just started opening up. My relationship became more beautiful. The doubt left. And because I became more certain about who I was, it allowed my partner to be more of who he is. And instead of me clinging on to him, because I wanted to make sure I didn't lose him, I actually let him free. And that freedom allowed him to be more of who he is, but also to enjoy life more, to, to evolve in the relationship. I feel like I'm talking a lot, so maybe I should allow you to ask some questions. <laughs> no, no, it's good. No, I appreciate it. No, that's that's uh, that's all excellent stuff. There was a couple of things that that came up uh, for me, but certainly don't feel like you're dominating the conversation. Feel free to speak uh, is is w what you feel called to. Um, so the two things that that kind of came up for me and there was multiple uh, things for sure. Uh, but the two that came up were like awareness in, in like fear, like they're two different things, obviously. Um, but just becoming aware, like you said, of the, uh, of the beliefs or just even becoming aware of the source of like a lot of the fear um, and things of that nature uh, that kind of really open things up in a way. I mean, I know there's more to it than that, but that seems to be a large part, I think, for a lot of us, um, I yeah. would assume. Like, uh, And it always just leads me back to that quote. And I think about this frequently because, I mean, not, not every day or anything, but, but often when it comes up, uh, when I get into my own types of fear, like the the quote is like, there's nothing to fear, but fear itself. Right. And like at, when I was younger and I heard that, I wasn't quite sure like what it meant, but definitely as I got older, I started to realize that what they're saying or what was being said from that is that fear, like literally the, the fear is the only thing to be afraid of because it, because of what it does to us, you know, because of the types of blocks that it brings and because of the type yeah. of limitations and the stories we create based out of that fear. Um, and I love the what you spoke about as far as far as like clearing that out and just letting your mind quiet from that because once you understand or have the awareness of where that fear is coming from and you can let that go, um, then that quiets down and then how that impacted your relationship that it let you be more re relaxed and free and which allowed your partner to then also be more relaxed and free. There was this reciprocation, cool. um, you know, and uh, yeah, like the the tighter we try to hold on to something or control something, the less control we really have, right? Like it seems. Of course, like, it yeah. slips away then, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who wants to be in a relationship where they are controlled by their partner, whereby they lose their freedom? Mm -hmm. Some might want it, but most of us probably don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then I think too, like if, if we find you know the, the person that that does want it there's probably something underlying that where they probably mm -hmm. ultimately don't really want it but they're it, but it's comfortable you know or something of that nature yeah there's something there yeah. that's um probably some other fear <laughs> that's yeah. having them seek that that's true yeah yeah, yeah. that's uh well that's fun that um your partner was supportive of that uh for you as well like um in in uh just having you explore that you know and in in developing that that piece of you um so one thing that comes up because this has come up in one or two types of conversations that i've had with other mm -hmm. other people as well is that um as that as he allowed you to do that and explore that um it obviously created some change like for you um and for your partner um i assume is that accurate like um, oh, 100 percent. yeah so one of the things that that brings up for me just out of curiosity is that how did your partner respond to those changes as you were going through that um yeah i was just like to see how it was for them and how they how they showed up for the person going through the change you know so if you don't mind speaking to that i'm just kind of sure. curious i guess 
I, I feel like draw, drawn to talk a little bit about something else, then sure. looping back to your question about sure. the changes. Because when we look about relationships, why, why do we want a relationship? Why do we want to be in a relationship? A lot of the times it's to receive love and to give love. To know that we have a beautiful connection. But for a lot of people, an underlying thing, like what is actually love? For a lot of people, they might want to be in a relationship because it gives security mm-hmm. or certainty. Or it, it makes them feel like they're, they, it gives them worthiness. It gives them this kind of stability in life that they're seeking. In addition to probably love and other things. But we are kind of trying to find, not everybody, but I see it in a lot of relationships whereby we are looking for a partner so that we can feel good. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, I've done that in the past too. Mm-hmm. Sure. But what I've really came to the experience is that anything in the outside world, we can't influence or we can't change. The only thing that we can change is ourselves, who we are and how we feel. So instead of looking for relationships to make us feel good about ourselves so that we can be who we really are, why don't we start the other way around? Making sure we can feel good about who we are, that we can give love, receive love, but ultimately be content with ourselves. Be able to allow to express yourself for who you are, what you feel, what makes you happy. Because the more we work on ourselves first, the more beautiful the relationship is going to be thereafter. Because you're not looking for any more for someone that's going to make sure you're loved. You're not looking for someone that's going to make sure you're happy. You're not looking for other people to make sure you're safe and secure or have your certainty. Because once you can feel that, create it from the inside, which is the real source where it comes from, then we can give that to the outside. I mean, you both people give these things, the relationship is going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen or ever experienced. Mm-hmm. Yes, I see. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, it makes me think of um, the book Awareness uh, about how um, we have ideas, uh, you know, we're attached to the ideas that we have of somebody, you know, like we, we have expectations kind of of uh, most of us, right, have uh, yeah, in, sure. in our partnerships and our relationships. And that's where, you know, some of these things like the like the conflict or even falling out of love is when people are no longer in alignment with the idea that we have of how they should yeah. be, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I, I agree wholeheartedly with the finding it on the inside. Uh, Cause yeah, the outside, you can't change. Like you don't have control over that. Right. Like there's very little in our lives that we actually truly can control and ourselves is where <laughs> most of that domain lies. And that took me a long time to figure out too. Um, when I was really trying to influence, there was a good five, good five years maybe, uh, where I was really trying to influence my external world um, in a number of ways. And, and even because my background is in IT, you know, like, so I know I can be a very logical person yeah. and, and have all of the data that one could ever possibly need to be quote unquote right about a point. And I learned a lot of hard lessons that way that one being right doesn't matter and being right is a form of control and none of that, none of that, it didn't change anything. It just, I wasted so much time and so much energy around that and spinning my wheels and in a, in a way it was totally killing myself, um, you know, until I let go of that and started being like, well, I just can't change this stuff. Even, and it was a bitter it was a bitter piece of awareness for me to come to. Um, and then I was like, well, I guess I'll just kind of focus on myself and what I can like, you know, and that's, and not 
and just drop it. Like you said, let it go, let everything else go. Um, and then when I did that, uh, my, my life really did shift. Like it felt so much better. Like, first off, I mean, like not everything like was roses, but I felt a lot better. Like that's the first thing I noticed where I'm like, okay, this feels way better, you know? And then as I started to, you know, refine and work on myself and see the things, like you said, find the different fears, the different stories and clear a lot of things out, you know, take care of my own internal kind of mess, I guess you could say. Um, I don't then- think it's a mess. We all have our path, we all have our journey. And it's, it's this like constantly unfolding experiences that we have and we can decide how we want to experience them right Mm -hmm. we can take the hard way through control and having to make sure like we prove ourselves we need to fight we need to work hard and that's how we can be worthy and that's how we can make sure we are good enough and that's all to do with our like subconscious belief system right Mm -hmm. or when we are a bit more gentle and we've cleared some of those like beliefs on how we can reach success because success, what, what is it actually? Or how we can make sure we are good enough. We can actually do it through the easy way. Like the easy way is allowing the energy to flow. Mm-hmm. Understanding you're a human, you're here on the earth. You are here to learn lessons, to gain virtues. And the experiences that you choose to have to be able to gain those virtues are allowed to be easy, are allowed to flow. And how do we do that? By letting go of what's going on in the outside world and allowing to come up whatever comes up from the inside. How do we do that? Connecting to our heart and our intuition. And it's easier said than done, I know that. And it's a journey to do that. And everybody's on the journey. I teach a lot of this stuff, but they're always higher levels. So I'm on the journey too. But every time you get to like a higher vibration, new energies, you just see more of how beautiful this world is and how perfect this world is. Even the imperfections are perfect. And you just like, there's one thing going on and you're being able to see different perspectives. You can appreciate all the lessons, all the learnings, all the situations you're getting through. But also, you're going to be able to shift the way you're learning your lessons. Are you learning it through suffering, through pain, through hard work? Or are you actually designed to learn it through happiness, joy, and fulfillment? Because you can choose these things. And the universe will guide whatever you ask for and give whatever you ask for. As long as your subconscious belief system aligns with what you desire. And that goes by connecting to your heart, following your heart, but also by allowing the energy to flow. Now, linking this back to relationships, we always have our wants. I want my partner to be this. I want to have my my partner to, or my like life partner to have like a certain study, to have a certain income. He needs or she needs to have a house. They need to have one children and have this entire list of whatever they want. And I don't say don't have, don't know what you want because it's good to know what you're looking for. And these things will help you find the right person. But what's also the counter side on knowing what you want and desire is you're gonna make up, it has to be in this way then how often is the universe actually unfolding in the way you want, in the way you have laid it out? Might happen once or twice, but throughout the day, every experience you have, like it's very unique if continuously the things are unfolding exactly the way you want. It's, it's impossible. So even if you have it a few times, all the other times you're gonna be disappointed because it's not the way you want it. And that's gonna create some triggers within you. So that can create inner conflict or it can create external conflict. And then that can have an impact on the relationship because you wanted this and your partner did that and that's not the way you want it. So now you're not okay. So there's a conflict going on there. 
And how are you get at resolving that conflict? Is it gonna escalate? Because it's not what you wanted. It didn't fit your window of what is acceptable or not. Or, and therefore you're gonna point the finger at your partner because your partner didn't fit your window. So he's wrong or she's wrong. Or are you actually gonna reverse that and look inside? Look, woo, I'm being triggered here. This is not what I want. Should I set my wants? Should I set my expectations? Or as Tony Robbins said, should I exchange them for appreciations? Now that's one beautiful thing, but there's also, why do we need those wants? Is it maybe easier to let go of my wants so the universe can give me what's right for me? So I can appreciate the situations and allow them to unfold. And whenever I get triggered, get angry, instead of the pointing the finger to somebody else, which is the thing that creates conflict, why don't I look at myself and what I can resolve within myself to see how we can make the situation better? better? Because anything we are creating in our lives matches the energy we give out. So if I'm having a lot of conflict in my life, there is something unresolved within me that I'm learning that's creating that conflict. And this, I didn't understand this for a long time until I started experiencing it over and over again. And this even with the relationship with my dad. Sometimes my dad would just force things upon me in a friendly way. He would never for, like, force things, but he would push me in a certain direction. And I didn't agree with that. So I would be initially be like, thank you, dad. That's fine. I would let it be. But then it would come back again. And then I would be like, I really appreciate it, but it's not the right thing for me right now. Thank you. And then it would be silent for a couple of days and it would come back over and over and over again. And I'm like, God, universe, what's going on here? What am I learning here? that I'm attracting the situation. I need to deal with this constantly. Instead of, oh, bloody hell, why is, why is he doing this to me? Why is that person creating the situation for me? I didn't want this. No, no, no. My energy goes out. So therefore, I'm getting a response. Subconsciously, we can obligate people energetically to do things so we can learn our lessons. So it's good to let these obligations go. But like a lot of times we're not even aware of it until the lesson is learned and then things shift. So whenever I started to dig within my own belief system, clear my subconscious beliefs. And there, like, even though we don't need techniques to be able to evolve, to be able to grow internally, sometimes techniques can really help and improve the speed and make it much faster. So I use meditation. I love doing daily meditation. I use Tita healing, almost daily self-healings, regular swaps. I did my courses. I just, um, I'm teaching this stuff now because it's so powerful. And because when I started to work on myself, letting go of my trust issues, letting go of my control issues, which are huge, this stuff started to stop happening. People didn't try to control me anymore. I didn't have to distrust. I could trust people. I could trust the universe to unfold. When I started my second business, I had all my processes in place. And like I, I used to have my own business first, but I also have been like real estate investing for like commercial buildings, hotel development, etc. And then I started my healing business. And when I started my healing business at some point, I did it according to all like the the corporate way, because I'm like you, like I'm a, a very focused on the numbers, Excel spreadsheets, everything had to be logic for me to understand it. I didn't like spirituality, I rather had science because this way it's come backed up, it's, it's backed up. But what's really underneath that is I don't trust my own feeling. I don't trust my intuition. So therefore I'm looking for an external source who is telling me a certain truth, it doesn't mean it's the highest truth, a certain truth, 
so I can feel like I have control. That's all it is. And that's what's happening a lot in, in relationships. I don't, I don't trust, therefore I don't trust my partner. I really like it when people say, you can, you're not allowed to go out with this friend of yours who's from another sex. And I do, I do trust you, but I just don't trust your friend. It's, it's a typical thing. They, they, they're not okay within themselves. Therefore, they don't give the freedom to their partner. Right. Um, so, so when I started to let go of my trust issues, let go of my control issues, this is when things started, started to ease. Like I didn't have to go through all the processes within my business anymore. I actually took a break of my business for like a month, a bit more than a month and built my camper van. And then I started back up again and I just only did the tasks or the actions that I intuitively felt guided. And I made more money than before. I spent a fraction of the time on it. But because when you connect to your heart, when you allow the universe to guide you, then the things unfold. We don't have to work 10, 12, 14 hour days to be able to reach our goals. We can work a couple of hours a day and achieve more. Because when we do it in line with our intuition, we take the things in the, that are most impactful. And then it's about how can we serve? So you focus on the ways you can serve, not yourself, others. Because when you serve others, that's how you serve yourself. And you don't have to suffer yourself. It's about finding ways whereby when you serve, you can both benefit. It's about asking for this higher guidance whereby you are in alignment. And that means you are in alignment in every area of your life. Then you are in alignment with your relationships, you're in alignment with your business or your, your job, you're in alignment with your emotions. Things become balanced. Does that make any sense what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely it does. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, I just loved the... Um... I loved it all, but uh, yeah, I definitely have had experience, um, as you know, you're very familiar with my story and where I came from about um, allowing myself to choose different, various different things throughout my life uh, where I felt guided to, to do so. Um, and I think, uh, I'm not sure if my experience is necessarily the same as, as, uh, as others as far as what it's what it's looked like or like kind of the we'll put it this way like I guess for me and through my experience of connecting to like my heart and following my intuition there were definitely just shifts that needed to be made like relationships that needed to change um decisions that were made that um it was definitely like a, a letting go or break I should say with some old patterns and just ways of being and um and that that I mean I didn't I shouldn't I want to say I didn't mind the disruption I mean I'm not saying it wasn't uh, it wasn't always pleasant like going through what I felt was like a metamorphosis like you know this this like growing um at the same time I while it wasn't pleasant, I did enjoy it because I knew that it was going to lead me to where I needed to go. And it was, and it felt right, which is why I was choosing to do it. So that's what I'm trying to say. Um, as far as a question goes, is through, through your own experience, like with following, um, following that, I guess in the context, even of what you just gave, like where you took like a month off or so and came back, like, um, maybe it wasn't so disruptive, but did it, did it, were there any, was there any impact outside of just yourself or was there impact with like other people about like what you chose to do, like intuitively, like, um, and what you felt guided, like how you approached your life that way? Like, did it change, um, like so, anything like, sorry, I don't know if my, my question makes oh, any sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get where you're, I think I get where you're, you're going towards, mm -hmm. um, 
So there've been a lot of changes. And whenever there's change, you emotions can come up. And a lot of people don't like change because they cling to the emotions they want and they push the emotions away they don't want. And whenever we have changed, these things are shifting. So it's impacting. And then it's about the way we deal with change. And then you're finally okay yourself with that change. And then your friends and your family all have their opinion. And that opinion is gonna create doubt because even though they're not experts in the field that you are making changes in, they definitely have their opinion of what they know is best to do for you. Recognize it? Yes. <laughs> exactly. And then if the ego comes in and the ego is like, this person is right or this person is wrong and the ego is giving a totally different perspective again on the situation that is making even or creating even more confusion. And then it's about, okay, how is this judgment from others serving you? What, what are we getting out of it? Is it getting certain security or safety? If it's getting attention, is this the form you believe you're receiving love? Because we, we track these things because we're getting stuff out of it, especially if you're triggered by it. If we're not triggered, we can let the energy flow and it will just disappear and it, you're not getting distracted by it. So you're allowing your change to happen. But when it's triggering you, when you feel something inside, when people are saying stuff to you, then there's something underneath there. And it's about exploring what's underneath there. Like when I started, for example, Tita Healing, and I like every time I did courses, I came came back home and my partner and I were very out of balance for a couple of days and then it would all be fine. And because at those courses, you're really going through a life transformation. You're clearing so much of your subconscious limiting beliefs that it up levels your energy and it, it breaks away a lot of the fear. You release the fear for rejection, resentments, or you let go a lot of, there's a lot of forgiveness and forgiveness is powerful. People usually underestimate forgiveness. Like whenever you forgive a person, you let go of the negative energetic cords that are there. And these cords, you might not see, but they definitely drain your energy. So when you forgive a person, you cut this energetic cord and you're getting protection from the universe because your forgiveness is your biggest protection. And then one area closes, the negative, and a negative cord disappears. So you have energy left to draw new opportunities into your energetic field that actually bringing you in alignment with your goals and alignment with what you want. And this is an opportunity to grow. So whenever I would come back from those courses, I would be like here with my energy and my partner would be like here and he's like, bloody hell, calm down, calm down, like be normal, please. And then it took a bit of time because this change needed to ground and settle in. And then there was within me a fear of growing too much spiritually, growing too much or evolving too much as a soul, as a person, that I would lose him. And I had that for a while and I didn't dare to look at it because it was sometimes when we are fearful about something, we don't want to see the truth. And then we make up truths because what is more, what is worse? having your own truth that you can live with and enjoy or seeing the real truth, which is going to create change and maybe changes in areas you don't want. And what's happened even more often is we don't want to see the real truth because we are fearful of the change. Well, that change probably never even happens. So I had a bit of all of these and I started working through them and I started like, being more open for the truth. What's the real truth? What is, what is it within me that's feeding this? 
And once I really like discovered it and let it go. So instead of resisting the energy to flow, I allowed the energy to flow so it could release, so it could resolve. And then like he's, he became supportive from a person who, who was very doubtful about it. Every time I came back and did this stuff there, he still supported me consciously. He said, I support you and I, I fully like trust you. I believe in you. And if it's important for you, you should do it. But subconsciously there was doubt, there was insecurity, but it wasn't necessarily his, it was mine. He was mirroring my fear back to me. That's why it created a bit of conflict. I was growing. He didn't choose to grow in the same way. He was still growing, but not in the spiritual, through the spiritual technique I chose. So that created doubt. But when I started clearing my stuff, he actually, it created a space for him to step into, to grow together in our own ways. So it comes back again. Are we controlling any relationship? Is it what we believe is right? And therefore our partner has to adjust to that. And we're not allowing our partner to have their own views. Do we subconsciously still want to control? Because we know what's best. Our ego knows what's best for us and for the other person. Or are we daring to let go of this and actually see what's underneath that? Why are we being influenced so much? Why do we want to control so much? Can we show ourselves that we can be free, that our partner can be free without being, having to be alone? Because you can be in a relationship, have the most amazing relationship, but still feel like you're free. That's a real relationship. So it's about, I guess for us, it was about being, being willing to see the truth and working on your own things. Instead of hiding them away very deep somewhere in your heart with being locked and the key never to be found. It's about getting the key, opening it up and allowing whatever comes up to come up. And it's quite easy to do, like there's spiritual techniques, there are wonderful techniques out there. Like Tita healing is not the only thing. There are plenty of different things where you just do meditation. But what I've been doing a lot as well, whenever I got triggered, instead of getting into a victim role or into like a blaming role or a judging role, you just take 10 minutes for yourself and meditate because then you allow the energy to flow you go out of your mind and into your heart. Like my business is called From Head to Heart because our head, our mind and our ego are a lot of the times distracting us. They're distracting us of, of the energy that's flowing, of what's really going on. They're distracting us of the beauty who we are, the power that we have. Not the power to abuse or misuse or judge, the power to serve, the power, the power to to shine light, to bright, like, to really send this love that we have for ourselves and for others, and to to up level ourselves and others at the same time. But a lot of the times we hold that back because there might be a fear, or like a lot of the times people are more afraid for success than for failure, so they choose for failure instead of success. Hard to actually admit to yourself because we want to be successful. Really, does your subconscious want that too? Um, but once you allow yourself to actually discover it, whenever triggers are coming up, whenever stuff is coming up, do it five for 10 minutes meditation. Allow your mind to be silent. Connect to your heart. And you will see after this five or 10 minutes, you will look at it differently because your response is not going to be the same that when you started before the meditation, when you got triggered because your ego mind, your survival mind is coming up. They're the ones that are going to solve the situation for you because they're the quickest to respond. So give yourself this minute, a couple of minutes, allow the energy to flow, allow the blockage to come up to the surface and to disappear. 
And then you respond very differently. And you see that conflict and relationships are not even existing anymore. They don't have to be there. And then your partner will respond very differently to you because you're not trying to control. You're not trying to tell them what to do. And you're just allowing the energy of love to be there. Love without exchange. Love that's unconditional. Yeah, I like that. That was, <laughs> I love listening to you. <laughs> um, it reminds me of a, a story that I heard. Uh, it was something on, on Facebook about a mom and her, and her child, you know, and how she used to get frustrated having to wait for her kid to go up the stairs you know there was just some times where she was just like I want you to go up the stairs a little faster you know it's like you know how long like sometimes she was like I would sometimes I just want to go around him or sometimes it's kind of like help him up the stairs a little faster and then she realized that like you know what like she just started counting right and she's like I've never gotten past like 15 you know she's like 15 seconds like that's it that's it she's like what what in my life do I need 15 seconds for? She's like, it means it's nothing to me. She's yeah. like, but it means everything to, you know, my child, because then they don't feel, you know, like rushed or like, you know, whatever. And, and I just thought it was a real interesting piece. And I'm not necessarily doing the story justice, but that's kind of the gist of it. But it, it's, um, I think it speaks to kind of what you were speaking about, about giving your time. Like you, she could, her trigger was she was getting frustrated. This person's taking too long. Like it's, they're not, they're not meeting my expectations. Like, come on, let's go. Um, so it's the same kind of idea I feel where it's just kind of like, yeah, just give yourself some time to, yeah, sit with it and let that energy mm. shift. Um, and I find that too, you know, with my, with my children as well, like, uh, you know, children are great for triggers. And so, um, to like, let that see what's really coming up. Um, and even like, even now within the last 24 hours, I could have something that I could relate to with that. So I haven't taken the entire time to just kind of sit with it, but I've been trying to be mindful as I'm being triggered, um, and how I'm responding. So that I'm going to like, I'm going to pat myself on the back for that because like, I'm not, <laughs> because I'm not, yeah. cause I'm not like reacting how I could see myself in the past, you know? Um, and again, like you said, like uh, I am more excited uh, about how that will change the relationship, you know, like going forward. Um, and so that to me is kind of like that, um, that reinforcing kind of uh, benefit or like kind of drive or fuel for wanting to pursue like that awareness, you know, like, uh, um, cause I don't know, like for some people that hear about this kind of stuff is like, you know, it comes down to responsibility, right? We've got to take responsibility for ourselves. You know, I have to understand that like my reaction or my, my responding to my trigger is going to create something you know like and i'm putting that energy out there and i have to be i have to understand that i'm responsible for that like you said like you know with the things that like with your dad and things like that where you were like you took responsibility you're like what am i doing or like what's going on inside of me that's creating this instead of pointing to the outside world and being like this is happening and like happening to me and like not not, not understanding the relationship that you have with it and understanding that it's actually being like you said reflected back to you um and i think that's just an important piece for us all to kind of kind of connect with um because i think i mean that's really probably one of the first things that we need to do is just understand our responsibility for what we have in our what we've created you know because yeah. like you said we we are we are that powerful that we create our experience and like what like what that looks like into, I, I always like to tell the story about like when I was in college that um, there was something embroidered, like somebody had this embroidered um, saying in their office and I used to work at a telephone company and it was in there in one of the, one of the offices. And I can't remember exactly what it said, but it said basically that type of thing where, you know, we're not responsible to like, 
I forget. The idea was basically taking responsibility on how we choose to respond to things. I remember being like in my like late teens, early twenties and like, I hate that. I was like, no, man, like this happened to me. Like this person, like, like this, does they deserve this kind of response? Like they brought that upon themselves and not like understanding at that time, like how much, you know, I think at some level I knew the truth of it. And at the same time, I just didn't want to, I just hated it because I didn't want to take that responsibility. And as I got older. Back to, are you willing (laughs) to see the truth? Right. A lot of the times it's easier to not see the truth because you can (laughs) see in our comfort zone. You avoid change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's a great example. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just remember. I remember getting triggered just by that saying, you know. <laughs> but I think again, at some core level, I knew the truth of it, uh, and it was just funny getting older and seeing how true that was, and just growing into that responsibility of of being, yeah, taking responsibility for myself, you know, that way. So I think that's a really big piece. So thank you. Yeah, for, it's always fun to be, you know, reminded in a lot of different ways and to see, you know, the wisdom of that and, and how, it, how it shows up, you know, um, how the different manifestations of it, so. And we all have different experiences and responsibility is also a very interesting one because what I've seen a lot is like people always want to help others. They feel responsible for others. They do so much for others. And at the meantime, they're not looking at themselves and they're suffering. They put everybody in front of them to make sure others are okay and they're taking the responsibility for others. But they're not looking after themselves. And interestingly is, like one of the most critical laws in the universe is the law of the free will. So people have the free agency. They can make their own decisions. And they have every right to. We shouldn't take people's free will away. And we shouldn't make decisions for others. And like all of these things, sometimes it just happens. But this is like free will is pretty important. But then how can we feel or be responsible for others whilst everybody has their free will? You can't. Mm -hmm. You can't. So it's. It was a big lesson for me to let go of the responsibility for others, let go of the responsibility of my, for my students, for my clients. They come to the classes, they come and see me and I help them to the best way I can. But because they have free will, they are still responsible for whatever happens in their life. We can clear their blockages, we can clear their fears, we can clear anything that comes up that creates it. But they are the ones who are responsible and they need to take that responsibility. And I can only be responsible for myself. And that's plenty, to be honest. Right. No, <laughs> <laughs> no that's true. I remember, uh, remember that particular session too, like, uh, like between the two of us um, with yeah. back last year. And that's, that's, uh, that's very true. That's, um, that I know, well, I mean, for, for sure, I've taken that on, you know, like, uh, uh, feeling responsible for other people. And, um, and I think that's a really important piece, not only in that particular aspect, um, but also in the sense of, um, putting ourselves like before, you know, before others and feeling that's just that, what that, what that does for us too, because one of the things I learned like through my divorce is that, um, it felt very selfish for me to put myself like to take care of myself that way, you know, and to put myself kind of before other people, um, not like in a selfish way, but in a, like, I, I need to take care of myself. I need to be responsible to myself. And like, that felt selfish. I just remember for a while that felt really alienating, um, and different because it was, um, it was just so opposite from what I had been doing. And then as I continued to do that, um, I understood like the, the wisdom of that and the truth of it, where it's like, well, if I don't, there's no way I could necessarily start to help other people if I'm not taking care of myself first. If I'm not being responsible, you know, then I can't, I can't possibly really show up very well for other people, you know, if I'm not being responsible to myself. 
Um, and then the other piece of that is, of course, like, yeah, I'm not responsible for people, but if I want to serve them, I, if I'm not serving me, you know, if I'm not taking care of myself, then I can't really show up for other people. I can't serve other people very well. So, yeah. yeah it, it's so true. It's so true because once we look after ourselves, we can serve much better and we can help many more people and have a bigger impact. Mm -hmm. And also when we let go of the responsibility for others, we allow the universe to come in, we allow God to come in to actually give them the healing they need, mm -hmm. to give them the lessons they need so they can move on and move forward in life. Because like we are good with what we can do, but when we allow God to come in and do its work, that's when the real magic happens. That's when things that people have never thought that it was even possible happens and it's magic. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Susie. Um, I guess for the sake of time, we might we can go ahead and wrap it up. But I want to give you the opportunity to talk about how people can reach you and you know where they can find you and everything. So, sure. yeah. Um, well, they can have a look on my website, which is uh, heart.com. Um, I'm on Instagram as well under From Head to Heart. And if people are looking for like, feel like things resonated or they just want a little bit more information about how I could serve them, how I could help them or any of the courses I do, if they feel like, oh, that sounds interesting. And you just like, there's no obligation or anything. You just want to have a bit more information. Just book a free clarity call or give like call the number that's on the website. I'm more than happy to help you, serve you and just give you some guidance. Awesome. And I can definitely attest to that. I worked with uh, Susie and it was amazing. So um, just, just from my own shameless plug for her, she's, <laughs> she's great. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. It was a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. The um, last thing that I actually, I do want to say, because I talked a little bit about um, going from your, out of your mind into your heart, mm -hmm. like, it's a really important process to let go of part of the ego and still without, like you can still love your ego and love this because it's a part of you. But when you connect to your heart, that's when you're really divinely guided. The only thing is don't become naive. You, can, you still need your mind. You still need your rational thinking at times. Like whenever you go and do an Excel model, please use your mind to the fullest capacity. It's about... Whenever you get distracted by your mind, when you get the ego comes in and distracts you, takes you on a journey, this is the moment to go to your heart, to connect to your heart. Whenever you feel intuitively that you should take a certain action or that you really enjoy certain things, then do take these actions. That's the heart connection that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So avoid being naive, avoid like not doing anything with your mind anymore because we have both and we need both. It's the balance. Mm -hmm. yeah and i think uh i think that's a good piece to call out too because i i don't know how it is for a lot of um, for other people um but just giving ourselves permission to follow that because there's times i think where we all feel it or hear it you know what we what we want to do or like what we feel guided to do you know and it there, our mind might create a thousand reasons as to why that's not the thing to do. Um, so I think giving ourselves permission to, to follow that um, is a, is a big piece. And for me anyway, like I, that's how it, that's how it was for me when I first started, I was like, man, I got to give myself permission to do this because there's going to be, like you said, there's going to be friends or family that have their opinions and their judgments on like what this choice will look like. And I've got to let myself do it in spite of all of that, you know, like, um, because it's what felt right to me, you know? And so, um, I know, I, at least I've, I've seen from some other people anyway, that like that, that permission piece is, is pretty big. Um, I don't know if you've ran into that so much, but I know that was a thing for me and a couple other people. So, um, but it's a very good point for sure. Yeah. And that comes back again to like your belief system. What mm -hmm. beliefs are you holding around this permission that that is blocking you from giving yourself permission or that's allowing you? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Awesome. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much, Susie. It's been, it's been a pleasure. I've loved listening to you and having you on. So thank you so much for, for your time and being a guest. <laughs> thank you for inviting me to join you here today. It was a real pleasure, Zach. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, Susie. All right. That wraps up today's episode of The Real Zach Olinger. Thanks again for listening. If you happen to find this episode insightful or valuable, I invite you to pass it along to somebody else because chances are, if you found it valuable, they will too. If you're on Instagram, you can find me at The Real Zach Olinger. Until next time, everybody. Thanks for listening. <laughs>